Se que de lo bajo, se que de lo bajo, olu a mi o ti de o yo se que de lo bajo. The Ashen Forge. Hello and welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary Neurotoxin. How are you two doing? Great. Right. Well, we are back again. We've uh, took a week off, had a new video entirely dedicated to UI. Um, did not know that was going to happen. Uh, interesting topic Did you think what's gonna happen i'm just saying i mean and it's an interesting topic to spend an hour and a half on well not an hour and a half but an hour or so um it's good to see um plenty to, to i guess talk about i did take some screen caps so i can pop them up but uh yeah it was uh not one of the more I don't, it was a good conversation not 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 i don't know i don't want to make anyone feel bad so i'll stop there but um <laughs> You know, UI, it's important. It actually is important, I guess. It's one of the more it's very important. important aspects. But it's interesting because it, it's not something you typically see a lot of time spent talking on, I guess, is what I'm getting at. So, Well, you know, it depends on the project. User interface means a lot for a lot of players. So uh, it is something that often does get featured in one way or another, whether it's uh, like an art stream that happens to be showing the UI or something a little more technical that's, you know, showing the functional parts of the UI and, oh, here's the art with it. Um, it's nice seeing all of the work that goes into um, trying to design and codify and, and refine the different elements. And I appreciate that they're trying to get something that looks pretty and looks clean but also conveys a lot of information in a way that you know makes it easy to locate everything so i think it depends on how much filler you want before alpha 2. <laughs> <laughs> well i will say um there was a, a side discussion you know they did what um unreal 5.1 and then decided to do 5.1.1 is that right? Um, and so they did mention that's been, I think, the last six weeks is what they kind of talked about and going to start testing it, I guess. So that the video would have been Friday. So I guess this weekend or Monday we'll start uh, opening it up. So it does leave. I mean, that that's the obvious thing, right? OK, well, what, what can we talk about when we've been doing this for the last four weeks? OK, UI kind of makes sense. We saw some of it already. Um, you know, it's not going to take a lot of in-game stuff that's currently being um, put back together. Uh, so, and Stephen, well, we can get to all that later on. But um, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So anything pop out about UI? Or I guess maybe we should start, you know, the feedback they ask for when you think of all the games you've played. Like, what is the sort of UI you're looking for? Like, are you, do you have examples? Um, we saw icons. We saw the archetype, uh, archetype I, um, uh, icons. The, gosh, what else do we see? Quests, inventory, the paper doll, the um, journal. We even saw crafting, which we can talk about. Um, but yeah, general, general thoughts. I didn't have any general thoughts uh, and when I think about what I would like, um, I'm curious to see what their minimap will end up looking like. Um, I really liked the compass from New World and it's a um, way of helping you visualize the world that I was not expecting to see and I think it worked really well. Um, I typically expect there to be some form of minimap just because we don't have all the senses that we normally rely on when we are trying to navigate through the real world. 
And um, so having those different views to help us to um, orient ourselves in this virtual world. Um, so typically when people have said, you know, I don't want a mini map, I'm like, well, we need to have something because not everybody um, works well with, you know, one type of map. Having two types of maps uh, is helpful for many people. Um, and then New World got rid of the mini map but added the compass, which is a really cool way of visualizing um, your navigation. So I'm curious to see what uh, Ashes of Creation will do, especially since we'll have the underworld, um, the under realm. Um, I'm wondering how that is all going to work out as well. I think the one thing with uh, UI that really stood out to me is um, seeing the blacksmithing interface and somewhere between a good start and whoa, 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 what are we actually trying to do here? And I will explain that. The good start is... I like that you're able to see kind of what you're able to make and what sort of things you can put into it. It doesn't look like what we're seeing here is, well, here's the items it takes to make this so much as here's the items you have that will fulfill these requirements that you are going to invest in this uh, crafting. Now, that's that's all good. Seeing the attributes, uh, the potential attributes and stuff you're going to get from that, that's good. I like that. The thing that I'm like, oh, wait a minute on is quantity. Quantity. It feels weird to me, the idea of, you know, once again, making stacks of the same item. I would hope that every time you make the item, you know, even if it's invisible to the user um somewhere in the background they are slightly getting better um you know slight you know low percent increases of the quality that you'll make that specific item uh or items of that kind so it's not just that you would be you know making the thing all over you know tens and hundreds of times making the same thing but that you would make them as you need for the different clients and slowly get better at making it that way, you know, in, in the whole of things. Or you could just grind it and hope that people want that specific uh, sort of thing. But I think one of the things that's nice about this system, it, it lends itself to um, a, a, a few different levels of um, transactions to be made instead of just oh, well, I'm going to make a, a, you know, this specific item because we know what this item is and it's only ever made one way and you want it and I'll make it. Um, you now have a lot more of the, you know, here's my curated selection of items that I've made that I think are of quality and, you know, I want to sell to you. Or the other side of things is a, um, you know, this is... I, these are the services I offer. Here's what I can make. Now I can either make it from resources I have, and I'll charge you uh, per the resources, you know, based on what's going into it. Or you can provide me the resources, and you're paying for the process of having me craft it, and um, you know, be able to put on whatever enhancements and stuff that I can specifically do with it. So that's that's kind of what I'm hoping to see is a little bit more expansion instead of instead of a quantity bar. I actually want to see a quality bar, the ability to potentially increase the quality of the item and potentially invest a little bit more resource into it to increase the odds of doing that. So, it, you know, you can potentially make something that's a little better in a very specific way or you know, use less resources and it can come out, you know, pretty good either way, but it might, might not be the most optimized. I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what other things are going to go into it. This is still just a first look. There's a lot more they can do with it. 
In uh, World of Warcraft Dragonflight, just making a stack doesn't mean it's going to be all the same quality. Um, and they now also have crafting orders, which is a whole separate thing where uh, people can um, request uh, specific items and they have to come up with the materials and put that into their order so that the crafter doesn't actually have to go out gathering those um, materials, um, which is similar to some of the stuff you were kind of mentioning. So considering that um, Ashes of Creation will have a couple more years to work on that, um, I think that they will be able to incorporate some of that stuff um, into their design as well. Yeah. The crafting is, I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff because this is, I think, the most detailed we've seen, right, uh, since Alpha 1, probably, of what the, the goal is. Um, like I said, the, the, the quantity selection is strange. You know, when we, we had had the Reddit, I think it was, AMA, the keyword was active crafting. So it's interesting to see that we have this option of fast craft versus manual craft here. I assume the manual craft is the action crafting component. And mm. I'm curious if that's just not done yet. So that's why there's no option to do that here. Or if they will leave both in and then the action component maybe is where you start to get into the more quality or some other changes. Yeah. You know, now that I'm looking at it, I didn't even, I couldn't even read those ones. Yeah. Because it's such a tiny little video. Yeah. The uh, but, apologies for the pictures. They are normally we get 4K versions of the smaller subset video and they've not done that the last couple of shows. So these are not the best. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that. That That's one of the first things that stuck out was this fast craft versus manual craft. Um, I'm not sure what that's going to end up being. I, I actually like the idea because I. Cause I of both, um, I think you do have some people that will potentially get left out or left behind that are pr traditionally part of crafting communities in MMORPGs if, you know, the bulk of what you're trying to do is active crafting and reactive sort of stuff. You're going to just, I think, leave out a lot of people that you shouldn't. So I like the idea of having both. Uh, the other thing I didn't enjoy seeing that picture was the, um, the gold sink. So... Uh, I think next to the or underneath the I think it was underneath the quantity. Yeah, there's a cost and it was gold related to that. And um, while I understand why they would want a gold sink, um, I'm sort of thinking, well, wait, we're supposed to have freeholds. Freeholds are supposed to have the tools that we craft with and they're supposed to have the best tools. Why am I paying Am I paying myself? Like, who am I actually paying here to use my own crafting items in order to craft something? Now, I could understand if we were at someone else's um, freehold. I think that would be an interesting thing if you can open it up and rent out um, space to people and take money from them and then kick back taxes to your um, on up the node structure. That would be pretty neat. Um, but for myself, I was sort of questioning why there's a gold sink in there. So. Mm. Are we sure this is not an order? Like something well, it looks like ordered. it's just something off their list the, of all the things they can kind of make there. Mm. Yeah. It, it could still be an order, possibly. I, right? I, I could see something potentially to justify where the gold cost would be is instead of having all the little bits and, and doodads and screws and all the other things that you might need, all the little tiny bits, they just glance over that and that's where the cash cost is, is all the stuff that any, you know, respectable tier four blacksmith would already, you know, the station will already have there. So you're just, you know, gathering them from the station and paying for it. That's... That's the best I could give. I I do like how everything is sort of arranged on the left and you have all your different bows, daggers, axes, 
I do like that. I like how it looks. I like how, because it, it mirrors the journal quite a lot, obviously, which I really like the journal portion, but also how I think it's the it was a spiked iron mace. And then under that, there are two different versions of that. Mm -hmm. I, I liked how that is structured. I like that idea as well of giving the crafter the ability to select something within um, the the general item to make it more specialized. I see everyone talking about New World in chat. The one thing I think we talked about that I absolutely hated with New World is the fact that it is random. Yes, now you have some ability to pick some perks, but really you're just, it's a roll of the dice. So that's how their endless crafting system works is that it's endless because there's just an endless number of possibilities that you can make. Um, so I like this ability to, well, at least it appears, we can take an item and specialize that item a little bit further, uh, at least from what the UI is telling us. Um, have a decent amount, have a decent amount of control. Yes. Have a decent amount of control um, in in uh, determining what that's going to be. Either we have some control in New World, but it's not a decent amount of control in New World. Oh, it's a terrible amount of control. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that, that, and this is just me being picky, um, you know, looking at the stats that are given from this weapon, this looks like a green item, so nothing that's, I guess, just an uncommon, you know, and you're getting plus 10 strength and plus 21 physical attack, it looks like, and some other stuff. Um, I, I dislike seeing large numbers. That's that's something that drives me nuts about, well, it used to be with World of Warcraft before they shrank everything down, right? You go from vanilla and you had an item that was plus five wisdom, which was amazing. And then you get 10 expansions in. It's like, oh, this is plus 5,000. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing something start out with such big number jumps is not, I'm not a fan of, but, uh, you know, whatever. It'll work, I guess. Uh, we'll get used to it, so. But yeah, crafting. Well, we have no context of what the actual range is and all of that sort of stuff and the level of the crafter. We we know nothing about any of, you know, if this is like middle of the road or if this is high level or what. So that's crafting. Um, gosh, what else did they go over? Um, one was the journal, which we had already seen. I can pop that up. I have pictures of all these on here. Um, again, apologies for the terrible uh, pictures, but uh, again, I, I like this. This this seems pretty decent. To, I like the storytelling. I like how the story parts are, are aligned, basically. Um, I like lore. So being able to see things broken down by chapter and then within the chapter, have even further broke down components is fun. I like the idea of having objectives that you don't know what they are yet. Um, although once... I guess once this is live, everything will be up on somebody's website at some point. But uh, mm, maybe. Well, I mean, it can only be relevant for so long since it's a dynamic world. And as the world changes, those quests should not be available anymore. And I'm also wondering how those quests will change over time. How do the story arcs change over time as different people um fulfill different parts of those quests, you know, sometimes that boss or uh, NPC or mob might, might not be around anymore. Um, if somebody else has completed part of it or the uh, node has been destroyed or maybe the node has bumped up a couple of levels or stages. Um, or different circumstances led to a completely different version of it. It might have been, you know, this character and this character on this version, but instead the Metropolis had these configurations, the first one that the server had. So instead it was this person and this person, uh, completely different folks. The the boss that, that either one of them is trying to support or defeat is um, you know completely different than the other one. It's in a different location. You know, that's the sort of stuff that, that I'm also looking forward to is how that stuff's going to change. I hope those chapters stay in the journal once you've completed them so that you can go back and see what you have done in the past, which is often not the case, but that makes me wonder how much data the journal can hold. It can hold a lot. 
I want to say one of the Might and Magic games or more actually kept a text log of every interaction, every quest interaction, every time you had a dialogue with an NPC that progressed something relative to it, every time you pressed a button, went to a place, killed a thing that was relevant to it, that got logged. So that way, you might not know what the order of things was, what parts were actually relevant, which ones were like the linchpin parts of it, and which ones were like the bonus. You just know you chased all the threads, and here were the results, and now you have them in your journal. And that's something you can refer to, like whether it's something that's actually going to be tied to one of those memory crystals or this is more just like your own personal log for you know your character's own story that's the level of detail that i'm hoping to not only see but also like you're saying be able to retain to be able to go back and review yeah and they did start to talk about i think gosh i don't remember the exact wording about that in the journal that yeah you can see where your story arcs have fit in to everything which i assume ties into the the memory fragments or whatever they had called it before which is neat i, I think the idea of being able to go back and experience stuff again is is pretty fun so or understand where you fit into the world Gosh, um, what now? Um, I'm, I'm curious. So the iconography part. So they mentioned, I'm going to pop this up as well. So these are the archetype um, icons that they have been, um, they showed us. So they have the, the fighter, cleric, ranger, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm curious when you look at these, like they, they, they said they want this to be very clear what the archetype is. And then within the classes, they'll try to take, you know, the archetype and make it, look similar but different so so keep the theme but change it based off of whatever your secondary is um, i'm curious when you look at these so so do these all make sense to you do, do these all like if you were if you were able to look at these without the header of fighter cleric rogue would you know what they were uh no no but i will also say i think these are more just an example of some of their tests of shape language and themes and patterns i don't think these are meant to be part of a cohesive set so much as here's some things that we're kind of thinking about for no they're definitely part of the set now that you see the header you should be able to understand the iconography because fighters are if you look at the names for fighters they're heavily uh focused on blades so it makes sense that we would see a whole bunch of blades in their iconography. You can pretty much tell that the rogue is shadow and dagger oriented. You can tell that the ranger is kind of bow and target oriented. Um, you can definitely see the uh, performance aspects on the bard um, icon. So if there were no uh, headers on those, yeah, I might not be able to figure out what that was at first. But now that you see them, and yeah, it all makes sense. And you wouldn't need to see the headers anymore now that you know what the categories are. It's pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, glancing at this, yeah, the fighter, I think I wouldn't understand. Ranger, yes. Rogue, yes. Rouge, I guess, is what it says, as mm -hmm. uh, TL points out. Um, tank obviously makes sense as well. I think Bard I would get. Um, and probably Mage just from the hat. The Summoner, I'm kind of thrown. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what some of these icons are, um, um, to be honest. And then the Cleric actually reminds me a lot more of like a Druid um, for some reason. You know, I see like at the bottom one there, I, 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 well, a couple of them almost resemble to me antlers. Um, the way they, they sort of come up and reminds me of sort of druid healing. But, uh, you know, the, the summoner actually kind of reminds me of the way you'd cast spells in the game uh, Anvil of Dawn, where you'd kind of pick the spell and then you'd have to draw it in the air. Hmm. And actually, now that, the first one. now that I'm thinking this through, I'm curious because they didn't say this, but I'm almost wondering if the top row is the base 
icon or the thought is the base icon for the archetype. And then the, the ones after that are sort of specializing down. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Maybe. So they look cool. I think one of the things that always yeah. sticks out to me um, was the original EverQuest and all of the different class icons. Like you knew, it, I don't know, there was something about it. You just, you knew there were shirts, there were lighters, Zippo lighters, I think there's a line of. Um, to have those icons on them. So I do think it's important. That's funny. Oh, yeah. The uh, the Zippos are collectibles at this point. Uh, but yeah, fun with icons. <laughs> we can talk. Well, about and then you had that other view of the colored ones. Um, uh, they're the, act, the skills. Let me, yeah, I can put that up. Okay. Yep. So that's more the the sort of skill, and I assume again, uh, like for Tremoring Bellow, uh, how there's differences that that's probably the secondary influence is my would be my guess, or mm -hmm. or, or they're just still trying to figure out what they want, I guess. Mm -hmm. but. I mean, you can see some that you know are probably ranger oriented and. Uh, I wonder if these skull ones are like necromancy specifically or cleric oriented. Oh, you're talking about that. I feel like oh, some of these are ones that we've already seen and we're just seeing some of the um the concepts that fed into it for the uh for the last set for this one. Uh kind of looks like they've broken up things into uh, a little bit of different this and that. Like the stuff on the left, it looks like um iconography tests for buffs and debuffs, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lion one might be for a uh, summoner. They are looking for more. I think I said they're still hiring, right? So if anybody out there happens to watch this, knows anyone interested in UI UX or, or as an artist. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to, I want to clarify with that. Not interested in UI UX. You are a professional UI UX designer with experience yeah. wow. that you can show. <laughs> Hopefully that's a given, but yeah. Yeah, it's like I like UI and UX and I've designed for it a little bit. That doesn't mean I would really be qualified for the position. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, what else? Paper doll. I don't know what it was about this. I, I for some reason it did not the character screen. I don't know if it's just too bland. Uh, it just seemed I don't know. Did not pop out like some of the others did. I'm not sure why. Uh, no, I did. I think they are. They said they are planning actually to take the two D paper doll and make it a three D of your character. So, yeah, of course, that will probably help. But yeah, I almost started wondering if it's more the um, the font there for like power dexterity i don't know some is there something that doesn't stick out like the rest so yeah, that much was fine for me i kind of like the um details on the right where we see the um equipment um you can seemingly change that there and i think they were saying that maybe you can see your inventory without having to um do it second button for your inventory, which um, is a little bit of a pain. So if you could just get to most of that from one button, um, it would be nice for sure. So I think they're started on the right track. Um, and it'll just get better over time. They've didn't got he, years. Didn't he say there's some people that have like 100 Nine, or like a hundred plus different armor setups? Like who does that? Do you, I was like, wow. Um, Not hundreds. Like it depends on how many different things you would need to have sets for. Yeah, but that's crazy. Uh, I think of um, in WoW, I want to say I had one for each set of elemental resist and uh, like one or two like high performance things for PvP, PvE. Yeah, I, I would assume I would have wanted something like that for Chronicles of Illyria. Fucking change your clothes every time you go to a new region in the map. Um, 
but um, yeah, there's some of that stuff going on in uh, the Ashes of Creation design. Uh, since you've got different um, environments can affect your skills and all of that stuff, you might want for sure different resists and to be able to easily switch out of that if you can. I can see that. See, the reason I don't know about, hun I don't know about hundreds. Be, the reason why Steven's going to be easy to kill is because he's going to wear sandals in winter and his character's feet will be frozen so he won't be able to run away. <laughs> Mickey K. Frost, frostbite as he goes. <laughs> Um, there's one thing that, and I'm not going to cycle back through, um, oh yeah, crafting outfits as well. Um, oh, yeah. Else, yes. yeah, in the chat. you know, one thing that just sticks out to me that drives me nuts about any game, really, um, MMORPGs specifically, is that as they're showing all of these, <clears throat> the character, the journal, the quest, everything is right in the middle of the screen. You can't see anything behind it. Um, and that, that has always made me nuts. And one of the things that I remember asking way back when we started with um, EverQuest Next, talking to those uh, developers, it's like, can you please take some of these windows and move them outside of the main game window? Like if, if there's one thing I could ask Steven and his team to try to do was instead of me having to hit M every time I want to see the map and it, and it pops up and it covers everything. Why can't I just have a side window and I can have the map open there? I can have my uh, a second one with an inventory that's that's visible on my second monitor um, so that I have the entire field. Uh, my vision is not obstructed. Um, I can play the game and have these things to the side of me. Um, I guess the compass does with the mini map, but but just the larger map. I mean, I, I would love to see some of these things moved out into other windows that you can have a lot more control over. And even with chat and stuff like that, um, and just let the game window be the game window. So, um, you know, it's World of Warcraft, for example, and I think they've started to clean, they've cleaned things up, but you know, there, there was a time it was just cluttered with buttons and it was just a mess. Um, and I think they've just more cleaned things up. But but if there's a way to just move that to a, to another window would be wonderful. Um, that's something I've wanted for years in MMORPG. So would be my two cents on the matter. We're going to keep going about UI. Any any other thoughts? Uh. I feel like I want to see a lot more of it in motion and maybe in a little bit higher resolution. It's it, options is one of those things that I know uh, people might overlook personally. I like doing options as like the very first thing, like, okay, done the prototype of gameplay. We, we know the concept works. It's feasible. We've got it kind of working. All right. Time to make a title screen and a pause screen that have an options menu. Why? Because I need volume settings and probably control settings, probably key bindings. You know, it's start start with all of that sort of stuff early. So that way, um, you know, as you go down the road, instead of having to implement those things and make sure they work you can be using them for aiding with development diagnostic purposes and things the entire way through but hey that's just me i think now that you have me thinking about it phantom um and i don't know how this would work i haven't tried it for uh like world of warcraft and i don't think you can do it but um, it would be kind of cool to be able to move, because you said, um, let me have the map and inventory open in another window. So that window should be on a second monitor, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that stuff over to your second monitor. So you have your first monitor, and that's all you know, game space moving through. Mm -hmm. And then your second monitor can have your really stuff, your map and your inventory open and 
all that stuff over to the side, um, which I haven't seen in another game yet, but we're at a place where that second monitor is common enough that that should be something people are thinking about. You know, there are games where you can go into windowed mode and stretch it across multiple monitors like that. So uh, I don't know if you want to increase the field of view that players are necessarily able to get because that might be kind of cheating. But you keep the field of view restricted and as you scale it out further and further and make more, um, you know, give yourself more room spending across more monitors, you keep gameplay anchored in the monitor that you started in and what you stretch out to the sides is basically you know it's it's blank space that you can put your your panels and menus and things on uh i think that's the easiest way to do it because instead of having to um uh, uh make a second version of the client that runs on the side and has to have security pass back and forth business and all sorts of shenanigans you just get away from all of that if you've got multiple monitors and your your processor can handle it all of your stuff can handle it yeah just drag it over on the other monitor and you put your inventory there you have your inventory up while you play there you go maybe you can even choose what that background is it can be like a nice red leather book cover sort of thing with a nice sort of texture to it you know what whatever floats your boat or sink theirs at least it would be very helpful so um the only other i guess comment that i have about this whole ui presentation i like obviously i do like how they comment on it being very user friendly so the ability to change any almost anything is is nice so um being able to move things around, position, size, scale up, scale down. Um, like they were, they were talking about their weird button uses. I, I have never heard of anyone that actually uses the Control Alt system. You know, you have one, two, three, four, five, but also Alt one, two, three, four. And Stephen apparently does. So, oh, and wow, I had Control Alt and Shift working uh, for different layers of UI. And I used my entire number pad to control all of my totems. This was just in vanilla. I had um, six or seven full bars up at all all times. Mm-hmm. That's too much. That's too much, man. I don't like it. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. very much minimalist. So giving me the ability to turn things on and off, make them bigger, smaller, um, is very, uh, very appreciative um, um, for me. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see. The one one thing I do not want to see, I guess, when I think of UI is something like um, EverQuest 2 and all of the skills. You know, you can get four, five, six rows of <laughs> of buttons and skills and things to push, which is just far too many. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, it's not that I don't like having a lot of tools and having a lot of options and a lot of variants to work with, but it's the idea that, unfortunately, it has an inverse effect where the more stuff that you might need to be able to have, the more emphasis it it is on you as a player to be able to play optimally, to have all of that stuff up and running and be able to hit all of it. And it it just gets to be a point where part of playing the game is managing your macros and managing, you know, okay, I'm going to press this button to target the raid leader, and then I'm going to press this button to target my targets, 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 target, and heal them. It's like, it, it, that's too much. I don't... To, you you got to make things either a little simpler or... Mm-hmm. Just less things that you can and have to do at a given time. Hell, even Destiny was throwing me off. There's one like very niche thing. I think I don't know who else has it. The um, hunter in the stasis mode. You make a frozen crystal and then you use the air move button, which I had never bound to anything. So I'm like, how the hell do I do this? Oh, okay. 
well, all the things in reach of my hand are already, you know, spoken for. So I guess I'll just put it on the number four. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that actually worked, you know, because it's it's such a rare niche thing. And if I'm playing them, it's like, all right, I use my use my super special weapon, get my number four. Yeah, there gets um, to be a point where there's just way too many buttons you got to be able to deal with. No, I was just multitasking and looking through the forums. There's a, a post about the gold cost for crafters to make items. Um, they said it's right above the fast craft and manual craft mm-hmm. buttons. I'm wondering if there might be a gold cost for fast crafting. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah, maybe you're supposed that. to do it, you know, slowly, but if you want to do it fast, maybe there's a gold cost for that. I, I don't know. This hit me. That, I think that would be uh, the nice way to, a nice use for gold there. Um, I, I disagree. I, I, it's my my tools, my my freehold. Who am I paying? No, no, no. If you're at your freehold, you probably don't need to use gold. You can do it slowly. But if you're out and about and you're doing you're out in the field or something like that and you're not you're you're away from your stations and you're going to do it, you know, fast yeah. and furious or whatever. If I'm at the metropolis, there's a, sure. There's a, there's there's a cost. So, um, but, but I don't know. You know, Tiff, yeah. even with mass production, I feel like I don't know. I, I just like who am I paying? I I would just like to know. I'm not I'm not necessarily against it, but it just seems weird. Um, who who am I paying the money to? Um, I would rather pay the money gods. Than, than have a time it's a sacrifice to sacrifice it, to the gods. If it's something that's just a city wide fee that even on your property you have to pay um that's kind of wacky but i get it you know some way to make sure the coffers are getting now obviously the intent is that the amount of money you'd be able to sell that to another player for is so much higher than the the crafting cost that it makes it negligible and yeah it's part of the crafting cost but if people are coming from far and wide to get your spiked iron mace because your spiked iron mace is just the absolute best spiked iron mace and that's just the meta right now then sure you know i could see how you might want to need to get into the mass production instead of you know, dinking about on each one and making each one kind of nice and unique in its own way. Yeah. I still go back to the thought uh, I've had in the past where you use the mass production or you use the uh, the fine crafting to set up kind of like the quality and blueprints for the versions that you can go back and reproduce. So you make it once and then given that you've got all of the exact same material components you can go back and make that exact same one again if there's a fee with that i think that's fine but you know maybe that's that's an instance where i could see it being kind of viable that you're now you have refined this thing. It takes very specific parts to make it, so you aren't going to be able to make it all the time in that way. But if you got all the stuff, you can just you know crank 20 of them out and throw them on the market real quick or hand them out to the group that's going to go hunt the big bad guy or gal or whatever, sandal beast. Yeah, I mean, I, I just would rather be... If I have to give money to the node, I would rather it occur at a point of sale or a point of transport. Um, or, again, I, I do think it would be interesting to be able to rent out your equipment to other players. So maybe someone doesn't have a freehold, doesn't want a freehold, but they want to craft every once in a while. So they come to you and they say, hey, I will pay you X, Y, X amount of money to craft or, or whatever you set up your own tax that that would be yeah i think that would be fine and then you pay a portion of that on up to your your node but um i don't know just just to sit and craft on my own like if i'm making i don't know sandwiches or something for an alt seems seems strange to to cost gold to sit in my kitchen and and uh yeah. 
There's just a bean ticker sitting there with a, a a piece of paper and a quill pen. Every time you <laughs> dink it, they just make a mark. It's like, er, er. all right, well, finished up. Looks like this one's going to be uh, uh, three gold and 27 silver. How many times did I hit the amp? I see what I would love <laughs> is an option, the ability, the option to not pay taxes and to see what would happen. That <laughs> that would be fun. Um do you lose your freehold? Do they try to forcibly evict you? Like that, that would be an interesting, uh, of course they, they wouldn't do that because everybody would just refuse to pay taxes. Um, oh, we're coming to repossess your property. Hey, nice crafting station. Don't mind if we take it. Bye. Oh, so I, I do think that would be interesting gameplay though, to, to give the option to, uh, to not pay taxes and to see what would happen from that. Um, an enemy of the state. So, well, gosh, well, uh, I don't know what else we can even talk about with UI at well, this point. So, we can get into the Q and A. Yeah. So there was actually, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. There was a very interesting initial question, and I've been trying to follow up on it. So, um, this was right after the show uh, or the um, the the UI portion, and they mentioned. I guess at some point, uh, so crossbows are not in the game. There are short bows, long bows, no crossbows. And the question was whether they have sold um, skins, items that look like crossbows, but not actually having crossbows. And that, that was sort of the question is, well, why did you sell a skin if there are no crossbows? And um, Stephen, I think, rightly kind of caught himself before giving an actual answer because he wasn't, I don't think, he, I think he was caught off guard especially when you have somebody that has paid money questioning what they bought. You want to make sure you know the uh, the question before you answer it. But I actually tried to look back through, at least on the wiki, to look at all the packages that they've sold, and I, I couldn't find a crossbow skin. And I don't know if the wiki just doesn't have them all. Um, I do think, though, this is a good example of the problems you run into of selling store items literally five years in advance um you know before the game releases and uh making sure you have all of your t's crossed and your i's dotted on release is probably going to be rather complicated but um it's an interesting question but like i said i could not find i could not find a crossbow so i don't know a tier weapon package from apox so that would have been way far back so i'll have to look that up a little bit more. I just thought that was an interesting question. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, I sent you the questions. Is there anything that sticks out to you? Um, I mean that that one was kind of an interesting one. Um, well, the I like the one. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Oh, you go. The the one about class specific actions and uh, activities we can expect classes to perform outside of combat, such as rogues opening locks, uh, rangers tracking enemies, removing corruption as I guess a cleric, um, and the we did get the example earlier of the mage using the arcane sight or whatever to to spot hidden doors. Mm -hmm. And there were several examples, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that will be, when I see a question like this, I think about, gosh, when you have so many different classes, how do you, uh, you know, how do you create for the ability for everyone to have something to do? Because um, it just seems like you could very easily get into where like, well, 32 of these don't make any sense. Like nobody's gonna play them because nobody wants them in a group for whatever reason. Um, and this just seems like a very good way to bring people that might have more unique specialties like this, um, combined with the idea that they're not going to do DPS meters and stuff like that. Um, hopefully, it will just be uh, allow players to choose more random combinations um, than you know classical MMORPGs where you're sort of pigeonholed to whatever the best build is at the time. Yeah, I thought the uh, kind of fascinating um, phrasing came from when they asked about secret 
secret quests and uh it was like uh if you have a specific combination of uh classes then you might get open access to uh secret quest lines and secret areas and i wasn't sure if that meant including a rogue one or if that meant uh multiple rogues um so might not even be a rogue it might be that you need a fighter that can smash through a certain sort of wall uh, I think you have to detect the secret door. I don't think a fighter is going to be able to detect the secret door. Might Opening not be the door a word is, detection. I don't think it's going to be fighter that's detecting a secret door. No, it might not be uh, the oh, fighter oh, who oh, detects oh. it, but they might be the one who opens yeah, it. Yeah, Op opening is different, yeah. And for some reason, I think it would be a tank that would open it rather than a fighter, but that's me. I think that was the YouTube question, right? Was that the first one? Is that what you're referring to? It might have been. Yeah, the, the YouTube question yeah. was, yeah, plans for rewarding exploration, um, uh, whether we hidden secret quest lines or secret doors um, and, and things that there are no hints. Um, but just being there with a specific, yeah, that that's that was that question. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked about, of course, the stars and how things could align and... Um, whether it was night or dark, I think there's, it sounds really, really fun, but it seems like a lot of content. So I don't know. I'll have to wait forever to play it. Um, <laughs> well, there's and a lot of stories behind it. Cough, cough. Um, we need to talk more about lore at some point. Um, there, there was one question that I thought was interesting because I had, oh, a it was the, it was, this one was the, um, as a cleric, you absolutely, uh, 30 minutes ago, I was talking about those utility abilities. Um, so is the one down below, 113.19. And he says, uh, 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 poisons reveal secret passages. Uh, yeah. Well, here was... Anyway. One of the we're starting to run out of time, but here was a question that I thought was interesting because I felt like they left out part of the answer, or maybe it's not an option, but it seemed like it would be. Uh, it was about player corruption. So are are corrupted players able to enter a freehold's boundaries or access its uh, access its content? And if so, uh, what's stopping freeholds from being corrupted players' safe havens? which I think is a fair question. The risk, the answer that was given was, well, yes, uh, corrupted players can go into their freeholds. Um, they can enter freeholds. Freeholds are also safe spaces. Um, but that they cannot interface with storage and they cannot interface with trading. And so that should be a way to um, sort of get around that possibility. The thing that stuck out in my mind though is, okay, so you can't store stuff in a bank or a chest, but if it's my freehold or if it's a friend's freehold that I have access to, am I allowed to just drop it to the ground and no one else can enter the freehold without the correct per, uh, permissions? And so, okay, I'm not Is there. Is there the concept of placing items on the ground? Well, that's, I, I would I would assume, but I don't know. I think furniture, yes, but I don't think this is the kind of game where you drop an item on the ground, someone else can pick it up. Uh, you can't do that in World of Warcraft, as far as I know. You can delete stuff, but it doesn't just drop to the ground. I mean, there are plenty of uh, I, MMOs. You used to be a, you used to be able to do that with EverQuest, but. I don't think you can do that with World of Warcraft, and I haven't played EverQuest. Yeah, you can do that in um, a lot of other uh, games. Yeah, drop stuff to the floor. So o old ones, but I doubt that's going to be a thing in in um, in Ashes of Creation, especially since they specifically are preventing corrupted players from trading. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like they they won't be able to, but you know, I actually I actually don't like that. I like the idea of being able just to drop stuff to the ground. But uh, 
I wonder if corrupted players can trade with each other. No, you can't trade when you're corrupted at all, period. See, that that undermines the ability to have like a, a criminal underground where you have corrupted it's not people supposed that to remain yeah. corrupt. When you're, when, you, when you're corrupted, you're not a criminal. You're a monster. Well, here's, here's the other option. So they well, can't you be both? No, no, but that's not what it is. You're a, you're not a criminal. It's not a criminal activity. You become a monster when you're corrupted. That's the concept. Hey, I resent that. I'm a mobster, not a monster. Uh, you could remain a criminal and not go corrupt. Then what's the point? If you're if you're not going corrupt, corrupt you're, is not, different. you're not corrupt committing is enough different. crime. No, corrupt is different than than crime. A different different concept. Do you get corruption if you uh, don't pay your taxes? You don't. Well, but if you kill the tax man, then you would. Uh, if you kill him without his without you know in a battle where there was no consent, I guess yeah. If he doesn't flag for that battle, then yeah, okay. You'll you'll. Uh, commit a monstrous act and become a monster. Sure. It's going to be because you did the monstrous act, not because you did the criminal act. I say they just let us follow corrupted players into their freeholds and destroy their freeholds. <laughs> that would that would work for me. Hey, what are you doing knocking my freehold down? Uh... I wasn't even there. Oh, your buddy was there. Well, what's that have to do with that? He was corrupted. <laughs> well, we are about out of time, so I don't know if there's... I wonder. Uh, corruption insurance. <laughs> you can get an insurance claim on your place, so if somebody goes in there with corruption and gets knocked down, you can get some money back. So actually, before we end, because this has come up before, there was a question about with um, will all cre will all create creatures be hostile? And if not, could I, for example, give gifts to goblins to try and make them more friendly to me? the The answer was no, right? Not you know, not right now, right? Uh, NPCs, yes, there's a faction and can be faction related type stuff with player NPCs and towns, but not for. Um, just random mobs out in the environment. However, Stephen did say he's open to the idea in the future of somehow reintroducing that, I guess, later on in an expansion. So this kind of goes back, Diggs, I know you talk quite a lot, you know, about some of the EverQuest Next stuff and being able to help different groups. Um, so fingers crossed, maybe that's something that will be able to happen uh, in the future, but uh, not currently, so. I mean, so then we're talking 15 years from now instead of 10 years from now. Okay. You're just, yeah, just, just all about the, the timing here. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm old, so you got to wonder if I'm even still going to be around by the time this thing releases. But <laughs> um, uh -huh. I mean, I was I, I, I was not expecting two years between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2, and that's what it's looking like at this point. It's going to be at least two years between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. Well, I am hopeful that the um, upgrade to the, the 5.11.1 is successful and they can start actually doing some more spot testing because... Um, I am eager, very eager <clears throat> to to get in on some of this. So especially the crafting components, obviously. Uh, but in the meantime, I guess we'll have Throne and Liberty coming out relatively soon. So mm -hmm. something else to do, which still blows my mind because mm -hmm. there's like no information out there on this side of the world about it. So <laughs> but hey, it's the one of the next big things. So. Well, all right. I think we are out of time for tonight. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will be back here uh, next Sunday and probably going over some of the questions, forums, and whatever else we can get into. So thank you all, and everyone have a good week. Yep. You too. See you yes. later. Let's go.